Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning. Hey, I was looking at all the crazy pictures in this story. Have you heard of this story? A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. It is really a great story. This is about a little girl named Camilla Cream, and she loves lima beans. I know. I, I don't know about you. I don't care for them, but she loves them, but she's afraid to let anyone know that because she thinks they might make fun of her because most people don't like them. So she doesn't tell the truth and some crazy things happen to her because she's not being true to herself. So you might enjoy this story. I know I have read it, oh, probably 20 times and I never get tired of it. It's really good and the pictures are incredible. So you might enjoy this story. A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. You can look for it at your county public library or you can check the Sora app and see if they have it digitally. I know you'll enjoy it, it's a good one. Oh, and you can also check your school library because that's where I got this, right? I got it from, that's Miss Parker, at Pyle Elementary School. Go Pythons! Thank you so much for recommending some great books for us this week. So if you're at Pyle, this one is in your library. All right, and I want to do a quick shout out to Dana Takayuchi Cruz. Mrs. Cruz, she teaches first grade at Bernie School. Hello, Mrs. Cruz's class. I'm so excited that you're watching PBS. I am super excited that you wrote me a letter and I'm gonna send you a little something. I might even drop it by, you never know. I have activity books that I would love to share with you. All you have to do is write to me here, right here at PBS, and I will put one of these in the mail to you. So I hope you will write to me, send me an email like Mrs. Cruz did, and you will get some activity books. All right, my friends, it's time for us to look at Sora. Do you notice something about our Sora? I know, there's no one's name on there because I wasn't sure who our top five schools were for last week, coming into this week. So instead I thought, you know what, maybe I'll just do a little shout out. Maybe I'll just call out some names and hope that they're there next week. Like Bernie, hey Bernie, I'd love it if I saw your name on our top five. You better get checking out some books and read. How about Wilson? Hey Wilson, I'd like to see you up here. And how about Viking? Oh, Viking, we'd love it if you were on our top five. Vang Pao, we haven't seen you in a while. It would be awesome if you joined us on our top five. Or, you know what? How about some of our high school kids? How about Hoover? You've got some brothers and sisters going to Hoover? Tell them to check out a book and read. Or Scan, Scandinavian Middle School. We have so many names up here. Roosevelt, Olmos. Mayfair, Manchester Gate, Bakeman, Turner, all of these people have been on our top five at one time or another. We would love to see them back on our top five next week. So get to reading because the best way to be an excellent reader is to read. And it also is an excellent way to be a good writer because as you practice and read, you, you're exposed to more ways to write and say things in writing. And that's what we're going for, right? I'm Mrs. Hammock and I'm here to help you be an excellent reader and writer. And this week, boys and girls, we're gonna focus on writing because it is week six in our unit five. So we're gonna concentrate on writing. We're gonna do a little grammar and different things that you probably have heard of but might need some practice. We're gonna do some capitalization because we always need to remember when to do a capital letter. And then 
we're going to write an opinion writing this week together. And you're going to help me. Don't worry if you don't know what an opinion is. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's get started with some grammar. The grammar that we're going to work on today is combining sentences. That means if you have a short sent, two short sentences, you can join them together to make it one big complete sentence. Now, there's some tricks to it, and we're going to talk about that, but I want you to pay close attention. So let's take a look at our practice page here, and we'll discuss it and work on it together. All right, two sentences can be joined together. The words and, but, and or are used to combine sentences. So when we're talking about putting sentences together, these are three words, and, but, and or, that we can use. Let's take a look at some examples. Kyle had a snack. That's one sentence. Max ate lunch. That's the second sentence. So if we put them together with the word and, Kyle had a snack and Max ate lunch. All right, let's see what it looks like if we use the word or. We can go to the park or we can go to the pool. Do you see how the word or is for when we have a choice to make? We can go to the park or we can go to the pool. So if we're going to put two sentences together that have to do with making a choice about something, we're going to use the word or. And then we have the word but. I like reading but I like math better. So they, the person that wrote this is like, likes reading, but they like math better. So we use that to kind of compare, right? So let's see if we can identify those joining word sentences, or joining words, and, but, and, or. Circle the word used to join the two sentences. All right, are you ready? All right, be looking for those joining words. I like to run and I like to jump. Did you see it? Right. There's our word and. And connects those two because those are two things that go together. Can Ella come to my party or can Lily come? Oh, okay, so we have a choice, don't we? Ella or Lily. And here's our word or. Kim rides a bike, but Brad rides a scooter. Okay, look at that. There's that word, but. All right, good job. Now, there are some other words you can use to combine sentences, the words so and because. And we're going to talk about those a little bit later. We're going to skip that for now and come down here to our capitalization because I don't want to run out of time for our story today. Madison went to John's Incredible Pizza on Friday to celebrate Allison's birthday. Now we've talked about how proper nouns have to have a speci are specific people, places, and things, and they have to start with a capital letter. So let's take a look at our sentences and see if we can find some of those proper nouns. Madison, John's Incredible Pizza, that's a place, right? Friday needs a capital. Allison's needs a capital. So all of those words should have had an uppercase capital letter. Did you get it? Good. All right, so we have a lot to go over today and I need to speed along. Today we're gonna to be learning about opinion writing. An opinion is how you think or feel about something. I like, I feel, I think, or in my opinion. Today, I'm gonna, we're gonna read a story together I want you to be listening to the story and thinking about the answer to this question. Do you think yurts make a good home? Before we can answer that, we have to have some information about what is a yurt. So let's read this story together and then we'll come back and talk about an answer to that question. Okay? Great. Here's our story. What is a yurt by Lily Ryan? Chapter 1. Who lives in a yurt? Do you go camping? Many people enjoy it. First, they set up a tent. During the day, campers fish, 
hike, and eat. At night, they fall asleep under the stars. At the end of a camping trip, people take their tent down, they pack up their car, and drive home. Tents come in many shapes and sizes. A yurt is like a tent, but a yurt is stronger. Long ago, some people lived in yurts. These people were called nomads. Nomads knew how to build yurts and take them apart quickly. Nomads moved a lot. They carried their yurts with them. This camel carries a yurt that has been taken apart. Early yurts were made of mats from sheep's wool. The nomads added mats in the winter to make the yurt warm. They took mats away in the summer. This made the yurt cooler. Yurt wool was felted, so it was thick and sturdy. Chapter 2. How are yurts built? A yurt begins with a wooden frame. It is always round like a circle. The frame joins together for a perfect fit. Builders put the roof frame above the circle. The, this family is busy putting their yurt together. The builders place canvas around the sides of the frame and they cover one section at a time. Next, canvas is placed above the frame. It will be the yurt's roof. It can take several people to put together some yurts. Chapter 3. Do people build yurts today? Yurts are still used in Asia as shelter. They are warm in winter and cool in summer. These yurts are easy to take apart and move. They can balance on a camel's back. The camel takes the yurt to the next place. This is a yurt village in Asia. Some people live in a yurt all year. Yurts can be a lot like other kinds of homes. Some people spend their vacations in a yurt instead of a hotel room. People can also build their own yurt. They can buy a yurt kit. A kit doesn't cost too much money. Would you like to live? Did you learn some things about what a yurt is? Isn't that cool? All right, so let's think about our question. Do you think yurts make a good home? Now to answer that question, we're going to, it's going to be an opinion. An opinion is something that you think or feel. It's different than a fact. A fact would be something you could look up and that you could verify, you could find the facts about it. So an opinion is not right or wrong. People have opinions and they might even be different. So think about a yurt. Do you think a yurt makes a good home? Because we're gonna write about that this week. All right, my friends, I know it's been fast, but it's time for us to go. Goodbye now, goodbye now, the clock says we're done. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Come back and write with me tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.